Okay, so today we're going to look at how to find the mean and standard deviation from a grouped frequency table. Um, so here we can see that we have some data that has been grouped in intervals 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and lastly 40 to 50. Because these have been grouped, I will not be able to find an exact value for the mean or the standard deviation. These are both going to be estimates, and that is why we are asked in the question, so there's some foreshadowing, we're asked for an estimate for the mean. The reason this is an estimate is that I do not have the raw data. I do not have the original data values. So looking at this first interval, 0 to 10, I'm not sure whether all of those data points were 0, all of those data points were 9, or 7, or 5. I have no indication of what the original data points were so I'm gonna go ahead and make a decision to assume that they are all the midpoint value by assuming they're all the midpoint value I immediately am putting myself in a position where I can only say that this is an estimate of the mean this will not be an accurate answer of the mean but it will be a good and well-educated estimate so let's begin Firstly, how many data points are there altogether? Common rookie mistake is to think there's five columns, there's five groupings, so I have five pieces of data. That is incorrect. In fact, we have, if we sum up the frequencies, summing the frequencies will be similar to finding n, as in the count of the pieces of data. This time round, we have 88 pieces of data. So n equals 88. But because these were frequencies that we added together, we'll actually refer to that as the sum of the frequencies. OK, so we're going to go ahead and calculate our estimate for the mean. So we are going to go ahead, so we are going to go ahead and make some assumptions, and that first assumption being that the midpoint is going to be used to calculate the total number of marks that this class achieved. So firstly, let's go ahead and find some midpoints in the middle of 0 and 10. Right in the middle is 5. Midpoint over here is 15, followed by 25, 35, and 45. Be careful to double check this every time. These seem to follow a pattern, but that's not guaranteed to happen. After that, I'm going to have a midpoint frequency row, and in that row, I'm going to multiply each of the midpoints that we found by the frequency given in the table originally. So I'm going to get so I'm going to get 30, 240, 600, 875 and 765. So these are all of the midpoint times frequency values that I'm going to use. Previously we saw that x bar was the sum of the x values divided by n. So we have a similar formula here, but the x values we found by using frequencies and midpoints. So this is going to be replaced by the sum of fx and n as we said earlier, we're going to refer to as the sum of the frequencies. So x bar is the sum of f of x divided by the sum of f. So we'll go ahead and put those values in. The sum of f of x being 2110. And the sum of the frequencies, as we said earlier, being 88. So from here, I can find that the mean, or x bar, is going to be, from here, I can see that the mean is going to be 28.5227. All right, so to four decimal places, the mean, or the estimate for the mean, is 28.5227. Okay, so now on to find the variance. Um, just like before, I have midpoint times frequency, but I'm going to need 
some x squareds involved. So we really wanted to find um, a few more values here. So can I find the x squareds, which in this case is going to be the midpoints squared. So those midpoints squared are going to be 25, 225, 625, 1,225, and 2,025. Now, this midpoint squared, I would like to multiply by the frequency. So midpoint squared times frequency. And this is actually going to give some quite large numbers. Be on the lookout. 150, 3,600, 15,000, 30,625, and 34,425. Okay, from here, I will be able to calculate um, the S of XX, which is what I'd like to do. Remembering the S of XX is the numerator in the fraction for both the sample standard deviation and for the population root mean squared deviation. So the S of XX. And we're going to use this version so I'm going to use this rather than the original that we'd seen, which looked like this. For this, I would multiply it by the frequencies, just because I'm aware that the calculation of each of those deviations is actually going to be quite large to go ahead and work with. Um, it is possible, and potentially I'll show that in another video, but I know this is actually going to be slightly more efficient for me. So I'm going to need the sum of the f of x squareds. In our case, those are m squareds. I will actually write it in the form that we're going to be using. n, we know, is the sum of the frequencies. And this is what we're going to do to calculate s of xx. So let's go ahead and substitute in the values that we know we're working with. The sum of the mx times f column, 83,800. I'm going to subtract the sum of the frequencies, which was 88, multiplied by the mean, which we found earlier, squared. I'll put the mean in fraction form to maintain accuracy. And that is going to be squared. And in this case, the S of XX is 12,207.95. Okay, so that's our numerator that we're going to go ahead and use to find our familiar. So that's the value that we're going to use as our numerator as we carry on to find some further statistics. All right, so just a reminder, the mean squared deviation, that is going to be S of XX divided by N. The root of that is the root mean squared deviation. The variance is S of XX divided by N minus 1. And the standard deviation is the root of S of XX divided by N minus 1. So we'd already found our S of XX, and we could easily substitute that into each of these formulas to find our summary statistics.
and there we have it. We found the mean squared deviation, the root mean squared deviation, the variance, and the standard deviation. All of these were found using S of XX. And that is how we should get our marks. So all of these were found using S of XX, as we calculated earlier, with different denominators, and either square rooted or not square rooted. Be careful to know exactly which of these you are asked to find in your exam question, and that should be worth all your marks.